And it's kind of like the activities we did today. So there are ways to do it. They don't like to be lectured to, right? But you can, through activities, find out how they feel. You can learn so much if you do, you know, four, four, you know, four corners and ask them, you know, any question. The question we asked started with, right? I have a strong sense of my identity. My ethnic identity, my racial identity, is an important part of who I am. And I bet you much more, it'll be completely different from this group. There'll be people in every corner. And they'll have them listen to each other. Because they're still learning, they're growing. You see what I'm saying, right? I think we would be remiss, right, if we don't allow them to think about their identity. And to go to the conclusion that they think is right for you see what I'm saying? Right? Their conclusion may be different from yours. Right? Okay? So there are many questions around it. I want to plant a seed so you can also touch base with your students who's in that training. Right? They do a lot of that. So in that training, we do a lot of, for instance, Asian American history. And again, we do it not in a lecture format. We just print out a chronology. We put it on different tables. And ask them to walk around and look at what happened to Asian Americans. And then we ask them to gravitate to that table where they see something that they resonate with, that they can care about. And then they stay at that table. And then afterwards, we go around, why did you choose that table? What was it that resonated with you? And then somebody might say, well, I never knew about the Asian animal. I never heard about the internment of Japanese Americans. I didn't know Filipinos were the first group that was here. I didn't know this, I didn't know that. And that's also a part of understanding the context. What's the context of doing all this stuff? You see what I'm saying? I would argue that's a important context. So I would encourage you to think about that. Now the good thing is that we don't have to do everything ourselves. Right? So I have to, I think I'm pretty good, right? It turns out I'm better with, actually, people like you, right? We're closer in age. You see what I'm saying, right? Anthony is actually better with the young people, right? So sometimes we go like, we identify what's needed, then we identify other people to do it, because they could do it closer, and it's a lot easier. So sometimes you can do a piece of it, you can ask other people to do it. So I'm a promoter in your programs to diversify, not just ethnically, in your leadership, in the people you serve, but generationally, right? Does your team have immigrants? Immigrants are very important, but do they have native people, right? And then you build a stronger team when you have that within that circle. So I'm always gonna push you, right? I'm always gonna push you, right, in that direction, in your training, right? How does that identity how do you understand your real life experience? Uh, because we, we would want that people with values, actually, honestly speaking, right? We want people who are competent, right? If they come up and say, hey, I, I'm Asian, but I hate Asians, well, I don't know, that's good. I, don't, I certainly don't want them in a position of power. <laughs> I hate to say it. You see what I'm saying? So it is relevant, right? And your job is to help them grow. Let me say it. Okay, uh, let's open up training. Other people, what, what do you do in training? Yeah, please. Uh, I'm gonna share the three aspect. I think uh, even though we didn't go through in-depth the Asian American training, but one thing we asked them to make sure they, because we are from Papa, Ohio, we encourage them to go to a Papa uh, website and uh, know our mission and vision when they go into the office, we want them to be able to see who sent me here, what is a Papa Ohio, or a Papa in general. The second thing we do since our first year, for the last two years, is a kind of workshop for the first impression. We know first impression is very hard to uh, impress other people, and once it's formed, it's very hard to change. So we have that uh, practice for them to shake hands with other people, do a two minutes conversation and rotate and two different people and then we critique afterwards. What
what should be done better, what you are doing better, and they critique each other. So that's a great uh, workshop. Everybody really enjoy it. And afterwards, when you ask them, how do you feel about the first impression, they feel uh, so much more confident than before the workshop. The, sec the third one we do is uh, what we call is a pie. You know when you, uh, even at work, the majority uh, to put you up to the next level is your image, your visibility, your exposure, not just your performance, right? So what we call is a pie. Pi, P-I-E, uh, performance, but P-I, image, and E, exposure. So what we ask them to do is, within 30 seconds, they need to talk about them, themselves, what they do, what they are good at, and why people should value you. And we videotape them, and this year we actually shared that video back to them, uh, even after gave them feedback, right, good or bad. And that's a good way for them to, to get just better at image leadership and um, represent the public Ohio. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Okay, yes, please. I have one example. Yes. Uh, this year, during the second session of our training, we did a more interactive way. So the for the second training, we assigned all the interns through uh, uh, email. Let them, because some of them work for uh, congressmen, some of them work for the state rep, and some of them work for the city level. So we assign one of the three questions, let them prepare. Uh, so the first one is how a bill become a law in Texas. The second one is how a bill becomes a law at the federal level. Third one, how does a city council do? So they can pick one of the subject and prepare. And so when the session, session start, each one of them will do their own uh, PowerPoint presentation. So this way, they're prepared for the material. And uh, it's a training of the public speaking. So each one of them are, you know, actually they prepare prepared pretty well. So I think, uh, and the, the trainer is a very experienced uh, uh, so-called uh, campaign manager, a lobbyist, it's, it's many years uh, political experience. So it's very familiar with all levels of uh, legislative process cycles. So he will just you know, uh, open up more discussions or point out uh, more uh, uh, questions. And uh, I, I think this kind of interactive uh, way of training is very good. So I encourage all of you to think about this. Thank you. So, so what I really appreciated in this example was, uh, was uh, that's part of your social capital too, right? Who do, you, who do you ask to speak, and do they know the subject? You see, right? If you ask me to speak on some subjects, you're just asking the wrong person. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, right? So what I like about that is maybe like this. What are the steps to get a bill passed in Texas? We'll start from the textbook. You can read it out of the textbook. This is how it is. But if you ask somebody that's a consultant, that's a good politician, that's a good staffer, and they could tell you this is the way it's said in the book. Now let me tell you also, this is how it's done in real life too. There's a relationship to that, and then it takes it one step further. Students are very good, they're very smart, right? That's the book answer. Now what's the real answer? The real answer has some relationship with the book answer. But that's what we need, right? We need people who really know the games, right? Who could really talk to people and say that, hey, these are the considerations. Here are the ethical lines you can't cross. Here are the legal lines you can't cross, right? But within this, how do you navigate this? And this is what actually happened. And students love that. They, they feel like, oh, this is the real stuff, right? So think about it. You don't have to know all of it. I don't know. 
right? I would think, oh, who would know? Let's try them out, put them up. And a lot of times, they don't speak that much to Asians sometimes. And then when you ask, and they could go, wow. And they feel like sometimes in the best cases, they want to pass on what they know. You see what I'm saying? You know, telling you, hey, I've been around this, I've been doing this for a long time. And so here's sophistication. We need a lot of sophistication. So you should aim for sophistication. Right? Does that make sense to you? Aim for sophistication. Yes. I just want to share with everybody uh, what we try to focus to do in our region, the Central Valley, uh, regarding the intern uh, training. Uh, we focus on uh, prompting them by giving them workshop uh, prior to their uh, intern. And what we focus on is we focus on the different type of leadership. Um, so we, we understand that there's different type of people meeting with an intern, so we want to focus and uh, deliver to them that there's different type of leader, uh, leader style, leadership style. So it doesn't have to be one concentrated type of leader style. So it's important that they understand that. Also, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we do a financial workshop, a financial leadership workshop. I think it's important for leaders to understand about money. Uh, and that's kind of like the real life stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and we also focus on uh, um, artificial intelligence because that's kind of like the new thing. That's great. And I think that, you know, uh, for, for us and for everybody, I think, you know, I think outside of the intern, you know, kind of give them what they really need, you know, to be a great leader, right? So if they don't understand what leader it is, it's kind of hard to, you know, get there because you can't even visualize yourself to be a leader or what type of leader you will become, right? So I think it's, it's really essential for us to prop them mentally to understand before they go into the real world. Excellent. I'm glad you mentioned that. So in the Pali, uh, we also promote, besides just learning about Asian American, that, that aspect, we're very strong in personal leadership. So Anthony, he just graduated a master's degree in leadership studies. And so he's very good. Had helping young people, and helping us too. We're, we're still growing. To think about different kinds of leadership. Where do you fit? What's your strength? Where do you need to develop? Right? How do you balance different needs, different obligations? What's your leadership style? How do you do all that? It's a whole piece that your students will love when you do training. Right? And I'm sure some of you already do that, but I just want to uh, affirm that that's a good direction to go. They, they could use it, right? Personal leadership. Whether, I hope that everybody minimally votes and you know, do all those good things right? later in life, but they could use it anyway. They could use it in family, they could use it at work, they could use it anyway when they understand more that, you know, that, that you can stand up and be somebody, right? And that's not really good. Yeah, please. I'd say it's aside from also understanding how um, how to operate around certain systems, I think it's really important for them to understand themselves. And so for the last few uh, for our trainings, we've actually done a kind of idea of model minority fit. And for students to really understand how they fit in within the puzzle and how society sees them, how they can combat structures from maybe their families or their cultures, why they don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, how they can become involved in civic leadership and be involved in politically be active. At the same time, for them to understand how society sees them and how they can take that perspective and use it to their benefit in terms of even how model minority myth affects other Asian ethnicities, aside from the major ones that people up, but how that negatively affect other minorities as well. And that's the aspect. You people who work with young people, right? You know, that's the part that a lot of young people are hungry. Right? There's a lot of pressure growing up in this society sometimes. And when we do a simple activity, so so you can learn slowly gather these activities, slowly look to people who are very good at doing these. A lot of young people, they already know what to do. You just need to empower them like what was done, and you say, hey, what do you want to do, right? Don't always feel that you have to teach them everything, right? If they learn themselves, they actually 
feel more empowered, and it's actually more relevant to their life, right? So, for instance, if we do an activity like a very simple prompt, like when I was growing up, uh, it could be a different prompt. Uh, it could be a prompt like uh, all those people who have some time in their life, and this works better with uh, non-immigrants actually, wish you were Asian. Or you can change it. Sometime growing up, you wish you were white. Cross the room. Wow, we had years where three quarters of people crossed the room. And then we had a discussion. Those things really helped them really understand themselves. And understand, and most of them think it was just me. Then when they see other people do that, and how they've grown, and why is it that growing up here, they have those feelings, right? They, once they have a chance to process that, their way, we don't even have to tell them. We just have to create the situation. They can, you know, work at it themselves. They, actually it does something pretty amazing to them. That's all I could say. When we teach this, I'm always amazed. Young people, you know, immigrant history, 100 years ago. I just teach it to them, and they did go like, wow. This really, now it really makes sense to them. Now I really understand some of the things that I've seen happen. See happen to my parents, see happen out there, but didn't know how to think about it, didn't know how to talk about it. And somehow that's a piece. You know, understanding more about themselves is so key to your training, just in general. Okay? Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we can take a couple more uh, comments if you have things to share, please. Uh, I have one more thing to share with you uh, about the trainer each year. We are a uh, Houston chapter writing uh, the internship only, this is the third year. But uh, each year uh, we have different trainers. It all depends on uh, which meeting I went to, what people I, you know, I know uh, in that year. So it happened to be that last year, in certain meeting, I know a lady, a Indian American lady, worked for BP, uh, Diversity and Inclusion Department. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the meeting, I discovered that she had very, very uh, intelligent ideas and speak very clearly. So I tell myself that uh, Although I'm not experienced, you know, because when Victoria Lee talked to me to be the, <laughs> the founder of a Houston chapter, I know nothing about politics. Mm -hmm. And I, I moved down from New Jersey to a Houston, I know nobody at that time. So that's why each time I went to any meeting, I just told myself, today I must learn something or I must make a friend, you know, to know somebody. I, I must have some, some uh, result from this meeting. So I observe very carefully about if runner go up to stage to talk about things, I, you know, later on I'll figure out, oh, who speak very good, you know, I exchange business cards with them. So each year I have different trainer because, you know, it all depends on which meeting I went to. And this lady I ran into, happened to be the best trainer ever. And all interns are so, you know, fond of her and they, they think, you know, uh, through so many lessons, she's the best one. I know the response is so good. Because uh, when I talked to her, I said, can you teach them more about communication? Because when they work in the office, communication is very important. Somehow she introduced them a book about how executive should uh, think and uh, talk. I forgot the name of the book. Anyway, what she did is she let them talk first, and then critique, and then guide. Mm -hmm. So each one of them think they are really learning something, the, you know, the other directions. And uh, <coughs> she likes all these interns. So during our feedback meeting, she suggests to have a meeting held in BP office. So I have a BP tour. 
you know, for that day. And in their very luxury office, again, she said all intern talk about the experience, and again, gives a lot of corrections, ideas. But too bad, you know, that lady uh, changed company. <laughs> I just had her uh, BP's uh, uh, email. So, but anyway, I think this is one way we can get very good trainers from outside. Thank you for sharing. So, so especially groups that are starting out, right, you don't have to go the whole thing. Some of these folks have been doing it for many years. So they develop a bigger vision, a big, bigger problem. Right? So at the beginning, you want to think, be deliberate. That's what I always say. Right? Don't just be mechanical. Think what do they need, really, from these students. What do they need? And then how do you supply them? Sometimes you train them. Sometimes you get other people. Sometimes start with the small pieces. It's OK if it's baby steps, really, honestly. But it's baby steps that's done well. Then you can say, okay, how can we do other things? Because training, so many kinds of things. You know, I do intercultural training. That's useful. Everything is useful, right? Everything is useful. Right? How you negotiate. Then you can get higher level, right? Right? Um, you can do training. Usually not with these interns, but maybe with you. If you're interested, right? Right? You know, it's kind of mindset. How do people who make political decisions think in the United States? That's interesting. That's very interesting. Right? How does it really work? Right? So the training, there's no end to training. It's your vision and your idea of what's the outcome. Right? What do you want to get out of this? And then trying to match the right people with the right training, hopefully that they would use that training right, for whatever purpose. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, thank the panel.